covariance versus correlation. Let's see. Both covariance and correlation give us some kind of a notion of how one variable is changing with another. So let us say we have two random variables x and y here. Uh, these could be two features in your machine learning model or one of them could be the feature and one could be a target variable, right? And what both covariance and correlation tell us is how the value of one variable is changing with that of another variable. For instance, if x is increasing, is y also increasing? Or when x is increasing, will y decrease? So let's formally look at the notion of covariance first. Covariance indicates the direction of linear relationship between variables. So the formula for covariance is as follows. Summation over all data points, xi minus x bar, which is the mean of all the x coordinates, into yi minus y bar, which is the mean of all y coordinates, divided by the total number of data points we have. So this is covariance, and it can either be positive or negative, it can take values anywhere from minus infinity to plus infinity. What is correlation? Correlation measures both the direction and the strength of linear relationship between two variables. So if we look at the formula for correlation, what we see is the correlation between x and y, two random variables, is the covariance of x and y divided by the standard deviation of x divided by the standard deviation of y, as you see here. The standard deviation of x itself can be defined as summation over all data points, xi minus mean of all the x's, whole square, divided by number of points. And similarly, one can compute the standard deviation of y. So what correlation is doing is effectively scaling or normalizing the covariance by the variances in the individual directions or the square root of variances in the individual directions. So if we have a positive correlation between two random variables, this is how it might look. When one of the variables is increasing, we see that the other variable also increases. So we see they lie, the points lie along a straight line with a positive slope. Zero correlation indicates that change in one variable does not impact the change in the other variable and uh, that's what we see here. Similarly, negative correlation implies that an increase in one of the variables leads to a decrease in the other variable. And once again, uh, it measures the linear relationship. Now, there are multiple types of correlation coefficients. The formula we see here is the Pearson's correlation coefficient. There are some uh, other variations that are commonly used called the Spearman's row or the Kendall tau and we won't talk about them right now. The reason why it's often easier to interpret the correlation and why we say that it tells us both the strength and direction of the linear relationship is because when you normalize the covariance by the standard deviations of x and y, what we see is the value is bounded between minus one and one. So if we get a correlation coefficient value close to one, for instance, in this case, it means there's a strong positive correlation while a correlation coefficient value that is close to minus one indicates a strong negative correlation where one variable decreases with an increase in the other variable. And when we have zero correlation coefficient or something close to zero, we know that there is uh, no correlation between these variables. To quickly summarize the differences between covariance and correlation, covariance indicates the direction of linear relationship while correlation indicates the direction and strength of linear relationship. Positive covariance indicates increase in one variable indicates an increase in the other. Positive correlation also indicates the same. However, a positive correlation that is close to one indicates strong positive correlation while that close to minus one indicates strong negative correlation. Covariance can be anywhere between minus infinity to infinity while correlation is bounded between minus one and one. So now, to understand covariance and correlation a little better, let's look at this small snippet of code that generates a random set of data points and it also computes the covariance. I've written a small function to compute the covariance of a given a set of points x and y and also their correlation. 
Now here is another piece of code that's plotting a set of points, uh, as you can see here. And you would expect these points to have a strong positive dependence, right? Linear dependence. So what that means is as the value of x is increasing, we see that the value of y is also increasing for these points. And as expected, we have a high correlation of 0.989 between this x and y. But if we look at the value of the covariance, we see that it's only 0.33. Why is the covariance so low? So as we know, covariance, when we look at the formula of covariance, what we will end up seeing is that if the range of values of x and y is low, the covariance will be low, which means that x and y are not very spread out in their respective directions. So if you see here, the value of x is between minus 1 and 1. Value of y is between minus 1 and 1. And it's not very spread out. And hence, the covariance value is low. It's still positive, indicating a positive, a, a positive relationship uh, where dependence. And if you look at this picture, where this is another set of points that are generated, what we see is that they are not very related, x and y are not very related to each other here. It just seems to be mostly random. When we look at both the correlation and covariance, we see that the correlation is 0.17, which is pretty low, close to zero. And that's what we expect. The covariance is higher than before, surprisingly. It's 0.52. Why is this so? Because what we see is the range of y is pretty high here compared to the previous picture here y goes from minus 10 to positive 15. This means the variance of y is y is more spread out. Hence the covariance value is higher overall even though the strength of the relationship is low in this case. When we compute the correlation coefficient we can see that clearly because we get only 0.17. So once again we saw what is covariance and correlation how they are related and what the differences between them are. Thank you.